All right, real quick before I run out of light, here it is. And the really neat part here is that I can get under here and access the battery memory card while it's on the mount, which is huge. As well as I have access to all my ports. I don't know if you can see them. And the only downside is when I open the lens, um, if I open it all the way, I can't turn it, so I have to turn it like halfway and then flip it. Uh, but that's not too big of a deal. The only thing I need is a smaller bolt to go right here uh, to cinch this, even though I really don't think it even needs it. It's, it's pretty good in there. You got little catches in there to hold it in. So. Uh, as well as uh, your microphone is technically covered, but I'm never going to use that. However, your uh, flash control port is still open, so I can still attach something to that. As well as one, two, I think there's one, three uh, other shoehorn or shoe uh, openings. So I'd say great success. And now I'm going to show you how it was made so you can make your own. Let's get to it. Welcome aboard. Hey. Okay, so a few things to note. This rig was designed for the ZV-1 camera, not the Sony ZV-E10. While they're both very similar cameras, and I'm pretty sure they share the same camera body, I can't guarantee that this will work. If you do decide to make it and you try it for your Sony ZV E10, please let me know how it went. I would I'd be curious to know if it actually fit or if it needed modifications. Sharing the links in the in the comments below uh, how you did it and how it worked out, I'd be very curious. So with that out of the way, I can tell you it does work for the ZV1 camera, and uh, it works very well actually. I think, in my opinion, my very humble opinion. Anyway, the way I did this was with a ruler and a digital caliper from Harbor Freight, so who knows how accurate that really was, and my favorite engineering program, Fusion 360, the free version, specifically. Now, when I was making this rig, I had a few rules set in my mind that I had to accomplish, a few goals, I should say. One, the rig had to be lightweight. Obviously, that was easily accomplished with the 3D printing method, so I wasn't too worried about that. I think I accomplished that easily. More importantly, I had to be able to access the battery compartment and the SD card without removing the camera from the rig. Next, I needed to be able to fold the screen out and flip it with as little uh, restriction as possible. And I, with that one caveat where you gotta kind of like flip the screen halfway, uh, I think I accomplished that for the most part. It's something I can live with, so I feel pretty good about that. Next, I needed to be able to access the ports on the side. So the microphone, the HDMI, the power, all that needed to be accessible without restriction. And then lastly, I needed to make sure I didn't restrict any of the mounting options. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to add as many mounting options as possible for tripods in various positions, microphones, lights, battery packs, whatever it is, you name it, I wanted to be able to add it in as many ways as possible. And I also think I accomplished that within the limits of 3D printing and space. So yeah, I think mission accomplished on my part. Now, on a side note, I want to go ahead and tell you that there were several, many failures when I was making this. Oftentimes, if it wasn't a print failure, I would finally print it, then realize that a measurement was off, or something to that manner, and I'd have to go in, remodel the model, and reprint it, and deal with those failures on top of that. But eventually, I did get there. You are probably going to run into some of the same issues. Just remember, it's okay. The only time you actually fail fail, the true fail, is when you give up. So, keep trying. All right, now for the fun stuff, the 3D printing. As you can see, I'm using Creality Ender 3 Max printer. And the best tip I have for you for this model, on this printer at least, is to tilt the model 15 degrees, as you can see here. 
and uh, I'll show you why in a second when we go to slice it here. So tilting the model 15 degrees reduces the amount of supports required and thus increasing the finish quality of the overall print job in the end. Now let me show you the settings I used to achieve this. Okay, so in the Creality Cura Slicer, I changed a few of the standard settings, and I had to go to Advanced to do this, Advanced Settings. Uh, and the reason I did this was to increase the quality of the print, make it extra strong, and uh, try to reduce the amount of finish and burrs on it as much as possible. Uh, the first one that I had to change was the uh, Wall Thickness Layer. If I scroll down just a little bit, and I'll show you right there. Uh, I wanted to make the walls strong so that they could resist any kind of bending or drops. So I increased that number to, I believe, five. Yeah, five wall count, which gave me a three millimeter thick wall all the way around. And uh, that provided enough support to where all the uh, hex nuts would go, as well as the walls and uh, small features of the, of the rig. And it turned out pretty good, so I would recommend at least a 3mm thick wall, if you can. Uh, let's see, next, uh, the infill I just left at uh, 15%. That should be plenty for this model. Uh, you could increase it, but I don't think you really need it. 15 probably is overkill. Uh, materials, temperatures, I kept pretty much the same. About 200 for PLA, as well as the speeds. I always keep my uh, initial speeds low. Uh, travel times I left the same and here's where it gets fun supports so under supports I put the uh, overhang angle at 70% and what that did is that ensured that very few uh, supports are printed only where absolutely necessary and this was kind of important to keep down uh, is supports just always create uh, rough areas and it's hard to sand those down so this just reduced the amount of work you would have to do in post-processing. Other than that, I left the rest of the settings pretty much standard, and uh, I didn't have any troubles with printing it like this. I think I had one or two attempts, and uh, after that it printed just fine. So that's what I would recommend. And after applying some bit adhesive, I let the printer get to it. And while it's printing, let me talk to you about our sponsor. Me. I'm my sponsor. For this show. Yep. Uh, that is all. Alright, looks like the printer is just about done. Okay, as you can see it turned out pretty good. Uh, you can see the lines there from where it was vibrating a lot, uh, so to speak. A uh, little bit of under extrusion up there, you can tell definitely there's some under extrusion right there. Not the greatest print I've ever seen, but also not the worst. Uh, the supports right in there did not want to come out very easily, so I had to scratch it up quite a bit to get them out there. Overall, it didn't turn out too awfully bad, especially because I was using a, uh, a cheap PLA that I had. Uh, and as you well know, a cheap PLA just doesn't print that great. Even the, even the words came out pretty okay. Pretty okay. So yeah, uh, that turned out pretty great. Now what I'm going to do is, in all of these areas, you can see here, where the bolts go in. I've got these uh, 1 4th 20 hex nuts. And I'm just going to stick these in there. Just right in there. Probably going to be a little tricky. And I think I'm going to need pliers for this one. Grab my trusty old rusties. Yeah, just like that. Sinks in there. And then to really get it in there, I'm just going to take one of these. I'm going to feed it in there. Wait for it to grab. And it should just snug it right in.
little bit of damage down there if I need. I'll whip out the old trusty X-Acto blade. Just kind of trim that area up a little bit. And if I was really proud of this print job, I'd go ahead and take some sort of sanding to it, or maybe a heat gun, and kind of soften it out. But uh, I'm not too awfully worried about this one. Yeah, I'm just going to do that to all of them now. Okay, so ignore and forgive my incredibly sleep-deprived and zombie-like behavior on that video, but let me tell you something I forgot to mention there. Those 1 4th by 20 hex nuts are very easy to get a hold of. They're pretty much available at any standard hardware store, and they are the correct size that's used for most mounting hardware like tripods and other uh, camera equipment. And while there are different sizes for uh, like pro versions of equipment, I think that 1 4th size is perfect for the ZV-1 camera. It's just heavy duty enough to be able to handle most uh, weight you put on there and readily available so if you have to replace something it's pretty easy. And there you go, that is how you make a camera rig for the Sony ZV-1 camera. Now I know my print didn't come out perfectly and I'm pretty sure I know why. Uh, my printers are currently on a fold out table and they vibrate a lot as a result and so it kind of messed up my print a little, but I'm sure you'll have much better results and at some point I'm going to tackle it again, but because this is a very utilitarian print, I wasn't too worried about print quality and finish and I just wanted something strong and robust and I believe, in my opinion, I've accomplished that. Uh, so far it's met my goals and needs and I hope that if uh, you have a ZV-1 camera and you want to rig for it, it can meet yours as well. I plan to make future attachments and uh, additions to this uh, this rig, different handles and grips and uh, mounts and all that, as well as like uh, something to hold a portable battery pack, a bunch of other stuff. And as I do, I will definitely release that. Uh, right now, this model is available, I believe, on Thingiverse. I'll try to put a link down at the bottom somewhere where you can get it and download for free. And uh, yeah, let me know if you printed it and what you thought of it and how it went for you. I'd be curious to see it. So uh, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, have fun. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more, more adventures. I got other stuff in the works. Lots of it. Different things. Prints and non-prints. Maybe setting things on fire. You just, you just never know. You just got to stick around. You don't know. You don't know. I don't, I don't even know. That's the crazy part. I don't even know. Anyway, we'll see you. Stay tuned. Have fun. Be safe and uh, rock on.